This is Jeff. His wife Kitty has Alzheimer's. She used to visit the day center regularly, but her condition has slowly deteriorated and has recently moved into full-time care. Well, we've been married since 1951, 53, 52 years ago. She had been slightly forgetful and not quite as bright as usual. And at the time I was very ill, and I noticed that she was like this, and I asked for a doctor to see her. And they all said, ah, yes, this is just old age, nothing very much to worry about. Then it got worse, and then it took six months for the doctors to decide that, in fact, she had what I strongly suspected was, in fact, Alzheimer's. Do you feel she was diagnosed late? Yes. The only treatment, apparently, that was available was a drug, Aricept, which was supposed to delay the, the progress of the, to slow up the progress of the disease. And the later we started on it, obviously, the less effect it had. So I think we lost some six months when the doctor did not positively diagnose Alzheimer's and therefore he was unable to prescribe the appropriate drug. What would be the point is, what would you tell people they ought to do in order to, to get help? Well, if they're used to dealing with uh, social welfare departments or one or another, well, go to them as soon as possible. I probably left it rather too late. I could have gone much earlier because I thought that I could cope on my own and do that, but it, it was only when things got tough that I, friends helped, uh, rallied round and gave me addresses and names and lines of approach to get the help that was available. We've had people getting her up in the morning, which was essential, bathing, dressing, um, that, and, and putting to bed in the evening, those two things. Meals on Wheels were excellent. They really, and they were reliable, and very, very, the, the staff were most helpful. Uh, I'd say, well, I'm going out for a few minutes and I'll put the door on the latch if you do arrive, and they'd come in, put the thing ready for me to do. The social worker that came here to see us when we moved here was excellent. She came and assessed Lonnie's needs and then re returned and assessed my needs, and she's been very supportive and very efficient. And the OTs have been, the OTs have been very good. They, Lonnie went through a period in which he wasn't walking, and um, they have been excellent. They came, looked at the place, put in place equipment, which has been a great help to me. I had a physiotherapist to come and assess him as well. I have had really good support all around, I must say. As well as all your other roles, you have to be a strategist. You are always on a damage limitation exercise. You must be one step ahead of the game. I'm not pretending it's easy, but one way to minimize the next crisis is to have information. And one great pool of knowledge is your local Alzheimer's carers group. I went to the one in Swiss Cottage and Marie Smith goes there too. I would say that it is very helpful. You hear how people cope. People have different strategies. And also, we must not forget that everybody who is in this situation, yeah, the carer and the person who is cared for, they have a special relationship going there, which is never the same for two people. Because I, I must tell you that I have a, a theory that the carer is the real expert yeah, here. Yeah? You hear stories and it helps you to sort of judge what you are doing with your own situation and maybe also help you sometime to find new solutions, you know. And it took me quite a while to understand that unless I put him to bed, he wouldn't, he wouldn't get him to bed because his brain wasn't really telling him to come to bed, but he was possibly very tired. People see things in different ways, so the slant is different for, for each of us. So I think all in all it could be a helpful experience, really. Lonnie is now incontinent. How did you cope with it at the beginning? You do not expect it. You know that it's a possibility on the horizon, but when it actually happens, it happens in a way that you possibly didn't envisage. When we used to go out, it was the problem. It became a problem. Because although I used to say, do you want to go to the toilet? And sometimes I used to take him either to coffee bars or to 
pubs and show him to the gentlemen's toilets. He used to go in, and I don't think he did anything really there. Maybe because he didn't understand what I was saying. And when he used to come out and we used to go about our business, he used to wet himself. And I didn't expect that to happen that way. You know, I don't know what, what notion I had <laughs> of, of, of this happening, but it was a very traumatic um, passage that. And then I had to accept that this was happening. And then I had to buy, you know, I started buying um, incontinent pads and, and sort of put them on and, and go from there. And then we had, the incontinent uh, nurse coming in and talking to me and so on. But his incontinence is more because he doesn't recognize the stimulus. It's not due to uh, weakness of the bladder or anything like that. He just does not recognize the, the stimulus. Uh, one thing I do find imp important, or a matter of some importance, is the need for the carer or the person such as myself to be informed of all the developments and the uh, facilities and uh, things that are uh, available to him. You tend to have to find them out for yourself. They don't just come to you. And um, I am now, I've now got to the stage that I've got all the things like taxi cards and bus passes and all these other things. But all the help that you can get, a lot of care, there are so many things that you can get both um, financial um, support, um, information, medical information, things like that. You do have to sort them out yourself. And the more help, the more help that can be offered that way, the more you get, the much, it makes life much, much better if you can get lots and lots of information.